the only building that I was a little nervous the night before was the Empire State Building because it was so much higher than any of the other buildings I had been on. On a chilly Thursday morning in early December, Amy DeLuca and Elise Mark summit, not the Empire State Building, but a 40 story high rise on the east side to meet a team of riggers securing many hundreds of feet of rope around seemingly anything solid on this building's icy roof before sending the rigging and these two climbers. Technically, we repel. Repellers over the side and down to 53rd Street below. You want to actually have like a personal trust connection with the person that is rigging you up and sending you over and taking care of you while you're on rope. Building envelope specialists Elise and Amy hang from the city's many skyscrapers, completing mandatory local law inspections, looking for building deficiencies. Broken brick, um, broken stone, spalled stone. We have a, a building stock here, much of which is now approaching or over 100 years old. Consulting Associates of New York, or CANI principal, and Elise and Amy's boss, Jarrett Huddleston, pioneered this system in this city. The first time that I did rope access was actually on the Guggenheim Museum probably 25 years ago. Jared estimates he's descended from a thousand buildings since and still repels today. I actually am on rope with him a lot. I've been riding hanging scaffolds, suspended scaffolds to look at work for my entire career, longer than 25 years, and I'd much rather be on the ropes. But while Jared's seen the equipment improve and the training grow more rigorous, the dearth of women on ropes hasn't changed. In the beginning, it was kind of intimidating. Canny employs an equal number of male and female climbers, but most companies in this field do not, making Amy and Elise in their early 30s, their four combined architecture and historic preservation degrees, and this morning's journey down to earth, something of industry outliers. I was just descending, and then I didn't have my hair secured back, and it got caught up in one of my mechanisms. While all parties stress the safety of this system of rooftop ropes, all devote much time, thought, and money to preparation because things can go wrong. I just cut my hair and left it. And yet, Elise and Amy, veterans for the last four years or so now, completed their Society of Professional Rope Access Technicians certification in just one week. And Elise repelled from her first 20-story building a week later. A good starter building and then they just went up from there. Those are interesting in, in a beautiful way, but then the newer buildings like 50s to the 70s, those are interesting in, in kind of an awful way. Every building, especially an historic one, offers a different challenge. When you have to go and fix something that nobody's laid eyes on in a hundred years, it can be quite difficult. Usually doesn't match what was on the drawings if you have the historic drawings. Weather conditions can also complicate this work. I've done inspections in January when it's 10 degrees. But Elise, Amy, and Jared all emphasize the importance of finding and repairing deteriorating sections of brick, stone, or terracotta before they tumble onto some lower building, vehicle, or passerby, the access provided, in many cases only, by a hanging rope, the value of inspecting their projects themselves, and the enjoyment they derive from this perspective, the rush of adrenaline, and the dangling hundreds of feet above the city below. Somebody else below you will get off rope and you'll kind of drop and you'll have that like heart stopping moment. Elise and Amy repel slowly all the way down to the street, documenting the condition of the facade on their phones as they go. We use cameras before with, you know, straps that are rated for, you know, falls and all that stuff. On the east side, I'm Matt King, Fox 5 News.